Hi, it's Paul Browning here. Uh, this is day six of Cisco CCNA in 60 days. So we'll first thing I request if you haven't already is like the or subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video and hit the bell so you get the rest of the videos. So as I said, we're on day six, we're covering switching concepts. This is a large part of the exam and it's your bread and butter as a network engineer if you choose that path. Every day read the cram guide. You can get the downloads on day zero and day one, the URL. Uh, sorry, don't rewatch the videos. That was from yesterday. We're going to watch today's videos. Um, I recommend you do the day previous as well if you have time. So on day seven, look at day six and vice versa. Uh, do the uh, labs at the end of today. Just ignore the redo, sorry and uh, take the exam again on the free URL. Also subnetting, go to subnetting.org and do the test questions or if you've got the 101 Labs book on Kindle or printed or access to 101 Labs we've got lots of challenge questions. So today is switching basics, how generally, generally layer 2 switches work. Uh, there's some layer 3 switching covered later some vlans it's really important you understand vlans voice vlans i uh, will just do that with a lab i think i don't know if we cover the theory but the lab actually tells you everything you need to know in packet tracer and then do the labs so uh, that's it really enjoy the lessons any questions drop them in the uh, comment section below and i will see you tomorrow Welcome to the presentation on switching concepts. We're going to cover some real basic layer 2 switching stuff. Although it's basic, it's very uh, fundamental for us to build on this before we move into the more complicated aspects of uh, CCNA and switching and VLAN trunking protocol. So before switches were invented, we had a device known as a hub, which I'm sure you've heard of. Not an intelligent device. Basically, it was a box with um, one or more, or probably more than one, interface where you could plug your Ethernet cable. All that hub would do would, uh, would take the signal, it would uh, clean up the signal, amplify it if it needed to, and then send it out of every other port connected. So what would happen is every connected device would receive um, the same copy as the same frame. And this would go on and on and on because um, hubs have no intelligence to them, they've got no memory with which to store connected devices. So this is just to illustrate from a point really, host A wants to send a frame to host B, the switch or the hub doesn't know where host B is, so what it'll do is send the same copy of the frame out of every single connected interface and unfortunately when B replies The same thing happens every single um, device connected pro probably apart from the one that it's actually connected to the port will receive um, the copy of the frame again so um, I guess it wasn't a problem in the early days of networking where I don't know what the most complicated thing you're saying would be probably a, a small text email but you can imagine now we've got voice traffic video conferencing um, very large files for desktop publishing and it just uh, simply wouldn't work so switches, layer 2 switches, remember they have a memory chip on board. Host A sends a frame this time, destined for host B. Um, when a switch first boots it doesn't know which device is connected to where but as the devices send frames uh, into the switch then the switch for a period of time will remember which interface the particular MAC address is uh, connected to. So you can see this particular switch has remembered that um, host A is connected to port 0 and host B is connected to port 10. So the other devices won't receive a copy of that frame. Um, MAC addresses, uh, again I'm sure for C prior to coming across the CCNA and studying for it you've heard of MAC addresses. It's 48 binary bits or 12 hex, hex digits. Oh, we're going to cover hex in the IPv6. Uh, presentations in a bit more detail. 
you can break the uh, address into the um, OUI and then the vendor's number. OUI is basically a fixed number that a manufacturer will purchase, manufacturer of network cards or um, layer 2 switches, so that each port can have its own MAC address. And you can track back, I'm sure if you um, actually check your own MAC address on your device and do a search for it, you'll be able to find the authorised vendor that's been allocated the OUI number. The um, OUI number takes up um, half of the hex address, so six hex digits. And then the other six digits are uniquely assigned by the vendor. They can go in ascending or descending order, it just depends how they actually allocate them. This is a classic exam style question as well, by the way, which part is the OUI, what is the OUI, and how is the address divided up? Now, I mentioned um, in a previous slide that a switch, um, well, if it doesn't know what's connected, it will send the frame out of all attached ports. The same goes, and this is a limitation of layer 2 switches, if a switch doesn't recognize the destination of address of an incoming frame, it will send that a uh, copy of that frame out of every single attached port or every port that the device is attached to apart from the port that the frame was received from. So here you can see uh, host A is sending out a uh, frame and doesn't know the destination so it's put the all Fs which is a broadcast number in a hex in um, decimal it would be 245.255.255.255 for IP version 4 and this is repeated out of every single interface. So switches build up MAC address tables. I've uh, just for illustration purposes, I've connected a router to either side of a switch here on Fast Ethernet 02 and uh, 0 slash 4. Now I think this is actually a short video which I'll play. So what I'm doing is pinging from one device to another. You can see the first frame has dropped. Um, due to uh, an ARP lookup. The second time I ping the second device, the ping has worked. And if I type a show Mac, now this is different depending on which version of Switch, which is annoying. Show Mac dash address dash table. To try this on your own Switch, by the way, because sometimes they, they only want one dash in it. And you can see that both attached devices are now stored in the CAM table of the Switch. So any time a further frame comes, that all pings will work. There'll be no need to drop the first ping. Show interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero on one of the devices, and you can see that the MAC address matches the MAC address that's stored on the switch for that particular port. There you go. Show MAC address table. Very important command for the exam and also for working on live networks. Switch functions, again, this is yet another one of these topics that was popular, it wasn't asked for quite some years, and now seems to have sprung back into the exam questions. Not that I could tell you what the questions are, but um, I've retaken the exam myself just to make sure the lectures are all relevant. So uh, what does a switch do? What's the point of having them? They forward and uh, filter frames based upon MAC addresses. They also learn MAC addresses from incoming frames, and switches use um, STP to prevent layer 2 loops. We're going to come into uh, STP on another lecture because that's coming to the CCNA syllabus also. So the first point, filtering a frame. You can see a frame's come in from host A. The source is host A's MAC address, which I've simplified to all A's. It's going, or it's intended to, for host C. So the frame is filtered from leaving um, fast ethernet port 0 slash 2 and it goes out straight to host C because of um, the MAC address table on the switch. It learns MAC addresses as I've already uh, mentioned in the previous slides but here it is in uh, diagram format. You can see that uh, the top switch has got three devices connected. It's got three different MAC addresses uh, but it's also connected to another switch via a trunk link. Now the thing is, uh, the top switch isn't going to um, know initially the uh, 
the exit port for host D and host E. When it does, all of the um, exit ports are going to be the same. It's going to be the trunk interface uh, in order to reach the bottom switch for it to reach host uh, D and host E. And there's no point in um, the top switch, even if it could, the, the technology wouldn't allow it, in knowing which port is connected to on a neighboring switch. All a switch needs to know is which um, which port does it send out traffic for hosts D and host E, and they'll be sent out the trunk link for the bottom switch to take care of delivering directly to the hosted hosts. Um, point three was um, STP, which uh, we're covering in another lecture. Switching frames, um, switches has got uh, three choices in switching technology, layer two for actually switching the frames, which is putting the frame onto the wire. It can use cut through, stall and forward or fragment free. Cut through basically the incoming frame destination uh, address is read and then the frame is sent out of the relevant port. The issue, uh, the good thing about this is it's very quick because the entire frame doesn't have to be copied and read and checked for errors. However, if there are errors on the frame, then they are forwarded. And you can see here the six byte part of the frame, the 1518 byte Ethernet frame, only the six bytes are read, which is the destination address. Store and forward, the entire frame is read, a cyclic redundancy check is performed, and then the frame is sent on. So this has the highest amount of latency, it takes longer. Um, it wasn't the preferred option, but now the Cisco 2950 and the 2960 switches now, which is what you're tested on, um, do use store and forward because the technology has improved and it's a balance between latency and delivering um, packets or frames that haven't been corrupted. So the entire switch, um, the entire frame is read for store and forward. Fragment free, the first 64 bytes of the frame uh, are read. The reason is it's been found that if there is going to be an error in the frame, it's normally in the first 64 bytes. Basic switch setup, um, we're doing a lab on this anyway, but um, generally switches all have a layer three uh, address that can be added for management purposes. What I mean by management is you can tell net to the switch and then um, do some configuration if you need to. And also um, the IP can be used as part of the um, network monitoring software, which monitors your uh, devices for errors and traffic and down interfaces. If you type a show VLAN, by default, all ports are in VLAN 1, which is a default uh, VLAN, also known as a native VLAN. So when you add um, an IP address onto the switch, it will be usually for VLAN 1. So here, here's how you do it. It's um, switch config T, and then you create interface VLAN 1. This is known as a switched virtual interface. What that means is you can't actually see it or point to it. However, any interface that's in that VLAN, and in this instance VLAN 1, um, has this IP address um, designated to it. Now, this is, isn't actually recommended to use VLAN 1 at all for switch security, but I've just put this command in just to illustrate my point. Where to send all traffic, you can put a default gateway on a switch and it will send all IP traffic to the default gateway. In this instance, I've just typed out um, the IP address uh, 192.168.1.1. Again, you must uh, try this command out on a switch in order to uh, remember it, really. Change the host name, same as a router, host name, and then whichever the, the host name you'd like to assign. Permitting Telnet, you can Telnet to a switch once you've um, added the switch virtual interface, the IP management address. On this particular switch, we've got 16 VTY lines. Um, add a password, obviously, and then log in. So the, the user's um, challenge for a password. And um, you'll see in another lecture that you can't actually Telnet to a, to a device unless um, a password has been added and the login command or login local, which references a local username and password. And again, this will all become clear in the, in the following lectures. For security, you can permit SSH traffic only. You do need a security enabled image. So if you've got a basic switching image, this command won't work. And this controls management traffic coming into the switch. I've typed the command in here. Um, 
uh, transport input SSH and I've gone into line configuration mode. So this could be done on your um, Telnet lines, line VTY, or so it can be um, done on the console port. Okay, so that's the end of the lecture. Um, important stuff, all some meaty exam questions in these previous slides, and we'll be putting most of this into context with some hands-on labs. Hi, it's Paul Browning from howtonetwork.net. So welcome to the lecture on VLANs, or Virtual Local Area Networks, if you want to use the full terminology. So in this lecture, I'm going to cover a few different things. We've got a a rough outline here on the whiteboard. VLANs overview. We'll start off with some VLAN basics. Um, like everything, every technology, there's rules that we should follow. Some of them you have to follow and some are just recommended, but we'll be looking at some of those. We'll also be looking at the difference between access and trunk links. You're going to be expected to know the difference for the Cisco CC and A exam. And we're also going to look at configuring access and trunk links. And it's important you can do both. We're going to look also at broadcast on a VLAN, why it's important we know about broadcast and how they work and affect your VLAN. And also we'll be looking at some configuration. So I'd like us to do a configuration, a simple VLAN configuration on one switch, where maybe we have two, two VLANs working on the same switch. And then what I'd like to look at also is how we can have VLAN spanning multiple switches because this really is the whole point and this is what we'd be doing on a live network and also obviously be expected to know how to do this on the Cisco CC and A exam. You'll be tested theory on the theory part quite heavily and you'll also be tested on the configuration. Now VLANs and switching is an area that a lot of people seem to avoid for some reason. I think they do find it hard and there's a lot of different rules involved and improvements over the year. For example the OTO2 standards and now we've got rapid spanning tree which we'll cover in a different lecture but we'll come back to this whiteboard shortly I just uh, I would like to draw your attention to Cisco's definition of what a VLAN is I'll read it out as well uh, virtual local area network VLAN it's a group of devices on one or more LANs that are configured using management software so that they can communicate as if they were attached to the same wire when in fact they're located on a number of different LAN segments. Because VLANs are based on logical instead of physical connections, they're extremely flexible. And that's copyright Cisco systems. So there's just one part of the definition I particularly wanted to uh, draw your attention to. I'll just under underline it here with my fancy pen. And uh, this is the part here. So basically, they can communicate as if they're attached to the same wire. I'm going to be explaining this in more detail later, but if you can grasp this fundamental concept, all devices on, on the VLAN think they're basically attached to the same wire. They've got no knowledge that, that they are part of a, a VLAN. And that's a good thing, really. We don't want any more complex complexity than we need when we're configuring our local area networks. And obviously the same principle to our wide area networks. So why would our end devices need to know? So we'll be looking at this, but really you can have a number of different devices on the same VLAN and they could be spanning multiple switches and even multiple buildings, depending on how you've got your, your network set up. All right, so without further ado, we're going to look at a simple network topology. What we have here is a, we'll say this is a hub to start with and if you've been in IT long enough or even if you've actually bought one from a local computer store for a home network you realize that a hub is a very basic device. Uh, I'll put it down here. So I'll call this a hub, and excuse my my writing, I'm using a tablet PC here. Alright, so we've got all our different devices. For the sake of simplicity, I've put them down as PCs, and I'll give them a very cunning identification system. A, B, C, D, E, are you following this? F, G, and H. 
All right, so as devices on a local area network do, they send information. And let's say, for example, PCA wanted to send information over to PCB. Well, that's the beauty of uh, having a hub. Um, that's quite easily done. Say, for example, it's an email. It gets sent from PCA across the wire. So this is your Ethernet cable going into your hub. The thing about a hub is it, it's not an intelligent, intelligent device. It has got no way of storing a directory of addresses like a switch does. So a frame that goes into a hub gets sent out. No, it does go to PCB, so that's good news. But unfortunately, because the hub has no intelligence, the frame also gets sent out to every device on the wire. So it's like going outside your house and you want to speak to a neighbour. I love metaphors. You want to speak to your neighbour, but you shout out the top of your voice and everyone in the street hears what you've got to say. So that's um, how the hub works. Now, the message is received. We haven't finished this story yet. The message is received by PCB and it sends a reply to PCA. And you know what's coming next, don't you? It goes out to every single device on the wire again. Do I need to draw every arrow? No, you're probably bored watching by now. So you get the picture. The other problem we have when we use a hubs, and they are they are still used obviously on, on home networks and even some companies are small businesses are too cheap to go out and buy a switch that I don't think they quite realise what the, the repercussions are. So let's look at a another colour. I've got so many to choose from here. Let's choose this colour. Say for example PCB sent out this um message onto the wire but as a, a frame was coming in say it collides on the wire so what we've got here is a collision and it's where two frames on the wire hit each other now if you've read about collision access um, of detection you know this doesn't happen with um, Ethernet but for the demonstrate purposes of this demonstration, we'll say there's a, there's a collision on the wire here. Now, unfortunately, that bad frame also affects all of the devices. So I'll just quickly put some arrows here. But what we have is a huge amount of unnecessary traffic flying across our network. So basically, the, these are the the foundations of you know packets or a frame sorry traversing on the wire and the reasons why we needed a switch in the first place all right so now we've got rid of all of that what we'll say now is instead of using a hub now we've got a switch so basically what a switch is is a direct directory of networks you can consider it like um like a phone book or some sort of other directory where it can store a table you have in the United States you've got zip codes and as you drill down to different parts of the zip code going further along from left to right it will drill further down from a state into a city and then a district within the city then a street and eventually you'll get to one side of the streets so in the UK we have postcodes and a postcode will get you all the way to um, the left hand side of the street for example if you went to the right hand side it would be a different postcode and then all you need is the door number and then you've got the correct address so let's uh, give our devices names again A B C I wasn't the world's neatest writer at school as you can see so we've given all our devices names now and let's say that PCA wants to send a message to PCB. Now, if you've just booted this switch up, it will have zero addresses in its um, directory stored on a CAM table. So what will happen is the frame will come into the switch and the very first time this happens, it will send a broadcast out 
on all wires. So it's like an all points bulletin saying, okay, I've got a frame here for PCB, whereabouts are you? And if there was another switch plugged in down here, unfortunately that would go across the switch. Again, we haven't started talking about VLANs yet. This is just a, a bog standard switch that you've bought from somewhere plugged in all your devices. Well, this time PCB will send a response back. And let's say, let's give our, all our ports numbers now. 0, 1, 2, and these are ports on your switch. Four, five, six, seven. Obviously, when you actually come to configure your switch, they'll be given a different name. For example, fast Ethernet zero, fast Ethernet zero slash zero, zero slash one, and so on. But I'd like to keep it nice and simple. So what happens is PCB sends a reply and says, "Yeah, here I am." Um, obviously the frame goes into the switch and the reply gets sent out to PCA so it does actually get a reply and all of these devices will send replies back but this is to the first frame what the switch does if we go back to blue it starts a little address table it already knows that A is on port 0 and it's learned that B is on port 1 and what it will very quickly do literally in seconds is store up a cam table of where A, B, C all the way up to H is. Now if no information, and this is default behaviour, if no information is heard for a while on various ports the switch, depending on how it's configured, but by default will clear its um, cache. Alright, so you can see how the switch is building up a directory. This is already far more efficient than the earlier example we saw where a hub basically sends out the frame to every single device every single time. The other very clever thing is I talked about collisions earlier. So I'm just going to show you So this is what the switch would look like. Now this is actually using Cisco's Packet Tracer program, but it'll work quite well. So these are the actual cables, or the, sorry, the ports where you'll plug in your switch. For example, fast Ethernet zero slash one. By the way, have a look at the back because the numbering system doesn't always follow what you and I would would put down. For example, it could be zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You may plug in to there thinking that's 0, that's 1, that's 2. And hands up, I've made this mistake myself and I've sat there trying to troubleshoot the problem for ages and realised it was just um, a silly mistake on my part. But each um, port on a switch is its own collision domain. So for example, say you've got a problem on this interface here and it's sending out, say the network card that's plugged into this um, port is having problems, it's, it's dying, sending out bad frames. The collisions will only remain on this port here. All the other ports will be unaware of collisions. So that's a, a fantastic um, development in switching technology that was brought along with the introduction of switches as well. So each port on a switch is its own collision domain. And you'll get asked silly questions like this. I say silly, but you'll get asked questions like this in the exam and you'll be expected to know the answer. So the other point I wanted to talk about is, say for example, all, all these devices you've plugged into a basic switch and you haven't even configured it. Switches generally can work on simple networks in a plug and play way. <clears throat> all right, so we've talked about how it's building up a directory of addresses. This time, Say for example, um, PCA sends out a message and say it's booted up for example. The switch receives the message at the port interface here and what happens is, and it can also happen by the way if there's a fault on the switch, it can send out faulty frames uh, and the faulty frame, I'm not saying it's a collision, this is something different, there's a fault on the card or some sort of problem or even a virus, 
it will send out a message on all ports again so you've heard of broadcast network broadcasts these are very bad that's a technical term so it's sending out a broadcast so I want you to understand is that every device on your network because it's on the same local area network so if I put LAN here these are these are all on the same physical network they will all receive the broadcast frame when a broadcast frame is received on a device it has to stop what it's doing this is the way the Ethernet um, protocols are all set up it has to stop the reason is a broadcast message is normally something important for every device on the network but the flip side of this is a broadcast message can also be an indication of a fault on the network card on this device here or it can be a virus or, or something similar so this is a major drawback and what we found is okay I've only put say seven devices here what if we had say three say if we had 300 devices on our network all stopping to listen to what this broadcast has got to say and then also sending a reply saying oh yeah well that's not relevant to us you've got a hell of a mess and here's my and it's and it's sending frames over and over and over again basically you can say goodbye to your network working for quite a while eventually the hopefully the network engineer probably you will find out who's got the faulty network card and then uh, fix the problem all right so we well basically I think it's time we we looked at VLAN basics here so I'll put a little tick on here say so this is what we're talking about again this is just a general overview at the moment and by the way I really do recommend that you you read a good quality theory theory book as well we've got different ways of learning things this is this is a visual way so this is obviously um, attaching to a certain part of your neurology in your, in your brain if you actually read read it it, it goes in in a different way in your brain and then most importantly kinesthetic or hands-on you must go through configuration guys we've got loads and loads of VLAN labs on how to network.net for you to enjoy and there's loads of freebies as well in the challenge lab section and 101 labs so uh, apologies for the plug of the site there but I really do think it's important sometimes people tell me they're struggling to get stuff to sink in and they just haven't found the right learning method for me I like these lectures I like this sort of thing really I like to get hold of a book and scribble on it and make notes and highlight stuff and then just configure stuff until it finally sinks in. All right, so what we have here, the the beauty of VLANs is what we can do. Let's say, okay, I'm going to put a square around this here this PC down here this one here so this is a, a small office obviously this all this stuff all scales really well and I'll pick a blue I didn't do very well in art at school which I'm sure you can see already in fact let's make all of these other ones blue for now all right so the red PCs I'll say the blue is say your human resources that's your human resources department the red ones are finance now this is a small example what if you had 100 devices on the finance network and on HR you had 50 most of the traffic I would um, suggest to you for the HR team will be passing in between the HR departments finance most of the traffic will be passing between the finance teams they'll be sharing data 
they'll have the same share on your server and they'll be sending each other messages so really what's the point in all these devices sharing all the same um, information the first fundamental thing is what we're going to do is configure the switch so that these devices are all in the same VLAN so any information that needs to go out to the HR team stays on the HR team it's a bit like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas if you've seen the film the other and this is a fundamental thing that you really really need to understand is if there's a broadcast on on a VLAN it stays within the VLAN so this is a broadcast domain of its in its very own right now let's go back to the finance team now if you're colorblind I do apologize but the same rule is going to apply to these guys here so any information that needs to be shared with the finance team stays within the finance team and again this is its own I'll just put B dash cast and B apostrophe cast this is its own broadcast domain as well so if there is a fault on the network or if there are broadcasts sent legitimately only the devices within the finance team will be affected this is very good for you now remember this is a a small scale diagram you could have well you would have multiple switches you could have the finance team on the first floor and the fifth floor of your building I remember companies expand they, they buy out other companies they, they just get bigger they move to the, the office next door because they've got more employees so this whole thing is going to be very very scalable you can I'll show you how to do it later but basically you can plug people in to the finance VLAN and they will they will happily um, continue working as if they're on the same LAN remember what the Cisco definition um, said at the very start all these devices here believe they're on the same local area network which is um, good for you as a network administrator so a couple of rules about VLANs um, the first thing I've already pointed out is the fact that all the devices here are basically part of the same broadcast domain so you have to remember and you have to think about this when you're configuring everything that if you put a device into a VLAN, for, exa for example, say you call it VLAN 10, and we'll, we'll cover numbering later, uh, all the devices within that VLAN will be part of the same broadcast domain. The other thing, and I've, I've seen this mistake made many times, Let's see which color I'm using, okay. So we've got the finance team. The finance because they believe they're on the same local area network they must share the same um, subnet address now I'll cover that in another lecture but say for example you've got the 10 network now this wouldn't be efficient for a small company but say all the finance teams must start with the 10 dot whatever IP address that is the rule and we'll go back to the blue here the HR team will put those on the 172.16.x network so we're not really sub we're not using VLSM here but I want I want to keep the example nice and simple so all the devices are on the 172.16 network so that's the set that's the second rule the first one is they're all on the same broadcast domain the second one is each um, VLAN must have its own subnet number now this leads us on to another rule say for example and this will happen 
you obviously at some point would like to send messages from the HR team to the finance team. Well, this is a network layer address. Layer 2 addresses are MAC addresses. So if you're going to communicate based upon IP address, and I'm sure you know what's come in. Let me find a colour that I haven't used yet. Oh, this will do. What you need to have attached to your switch, again we'll cover this, is a layer 3 device. And I'll just I'll just draw it here. So that's my um, poor attempt at uh, drawing a router. Why would you need a router? A router is a directory of networks. So this is the whole point of having a layer 3 device. Layer 2 devices, if I put L2 here, your traditional switch is a layer 2. Very quick, this is hardware based. So the re what that means to you and I is it can send frames to different um, ports very very quickly and make layer 2 decisions. If you want to route between networks, the way IP works is it has to then use the layer 3, advice, um, layer three address. And I'm sure you've read about ARP, we'll be covering that in another lecture I'm sure. But basically there has to be a mapping between the layer 2 address, which is your network card address, and the layer 3. And what, the, the only device we can have for that at the moment is a layer 3 device. When you go onto your CCNP you'll see that you can actually have cards within the switch, layer 3 cards, supervisor modules depending on the, the model of switch you have and that will do your layer 3 decisions for you. The last thing I'd like to make while we're on this point, I've got this diagram open is um, how many devices should you have on your um, per VLAN. With Cisco say, and we're not, we're not going to go into CCDA stuff, but they say around, or maximum sorry, of 500. I'm not telling you here that you must get to the number 500 before you create another VLAN. This is really going into the sort of design side of things and it all depends on how much traffic. For example, a computer aided design, CAD, and it takes up a huge amount of bandwidth and if you're if you're designing a network for an architecture company you may need to think things uh, through very differently again this isn't the place for me to give um, design advice but I just wanted to point out what Cisco say uh, is their recommending maximum for VLANs and again it's different for every switch as well Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is the difference between access and trunk links. Uh, I mentioned these earlier on and it's a, a fundamental fact for the a fundamental area of knowledge for the CCNA. So I've got a definition of access links and, and trunk links to show you, but the first thing I'd like to show you here is the standard connection from a device, a house. is here. So you've got a PC, a network printer, or generally a server, though you may you can have a trunk link from a, a switch to a server. Access link is normally for our purposes a connection between a host on your network and then the switch. Basically the feature of an access link is that it can only carry traffic for one VLAN. If we just hop over to howtonetwork.net, I've actually um, got the definition of an access link, link here. So uh, an access link, a switch port which is defined as an access link can only be a member of one VLAN. The device connected to the access link is not aware of the existence of any other VLANs. So as far as it's concerned, it's just on a flat LAN. The switch will uh, add a tag to the frame as it enters the access link from the host and remove the tag uh, when the frame exits the switch port towards the host. So the switch needs to know so, um, which VLAN the host is a member of, obviously because it's passing information between different VLANs. So it adds a little tag onto the frame. But as far as the end device is concerned, it doesn't need to know. Now if we go back to our 
device um, network here what we have is a connection between two switches now let's say for example we've got host here which is part of our human resources and down here we've got hosts that are part of the same HR now the problem is when traffic has to traverse between two switches we need a different type of um, link this is known as a trunk link the reason is basically the switch has to tag the traffic so it can traverse between two different switches now one of the things you don't see many books anymore for some reason but the, the minimum speed the connection for a trunk link is a hundred meg uh, purely because of the amount of traffic you normally do have fiber links between two switches if I can pull up my so here on this it's a 2950T you can actually have models of 2950 that has got its own fiber links but it'll have its own connection high speed connection the older 1900 type switch had 10 meg connections all the way across and then it had two one 100 meg but the times they are a changing so if we go back to how to network.net and we look at trunk links a trunk link can carry traffic from different VLANs at a time a trunk link is a hundred or a thousand megabit per second point to point link now here's something to bear in mind nice little exam question that they can ask it can be between two switches which is the standard thing a switch and a router which we'll come to and a switch and a server you can get special network cards where you can basically have a trunk link between a switch and a server the whole point of a trunk link is uh, it carries traffic from multiple VLANs at the same time now I'm not talking about virtual trunking protocol at the moment but basically you have to have an encapsulation type um, so the switches can communicate into switch link or 802.1q for the purposes of the CCNA exam the 2950 switch can actually only use uh, one type so it's 802.1q okay so I just want a little uh, recap of what we've covered so far we've covered VLAN basics some VLAN rules we talked about access and trunk links um, it'll make more sense when we've actually configured these but I've given you an overview we've talked about broadcast on a VLAN and the fact that um, only devices in the same VLAN will receive a broadcast frame what we're going to do now is look at VLANs on one switch so this is a, a basic configuration we're going to forget about any trunk links at the moment we don't need to worry about that and what we're going to configure is a very simple network again there's lots and lots of VLAN labs on how to network.net and I do recommend you have a good understanding of the theory as well so I don't particularly recommend using um, emulators but this is a pretty good one and it'll save um, messing about with anything too complicated we've got our basic switch in the middle here which is a 2950 which is what you'll be configuring in the CC and A exam and you've got PC0, PC1, PC3 and PC4 and I've got a little diagram here now for the purposes of this lab I think what we can do you can forget this is here for the moment forget about the router as well so what we've got is PC 0, 1, 3 and 4 and what we want to do just to keep it nice and simple let's create two VLANs on our switch we'll have zero and three and these guys can be in VLAN two and let's call this HR for human resources the other thing I want to point out is um, 
by default all devices are in the native VLAN. The native VLAN by default is VLAN 1. So this is the default VLAN that all the traffic will be passing across. If you want to create VLANs on the switch, we recommend um, you start off with any VLAN apart from VLAN number 1. And I'll, we'll create a second VLAN for PCs 1 and 4. And PCs 1 and 4 will be VLAN 3, and we'll call these guys Finance. Now I'm going to come back to this diagram. I don't know about you, but I'm a fairly visual person. So we'll be coming back um, just to refer to it, just so we can take stock of where we are. The other thing, do you remember what I said about IP addressing? So each VLAN has to have its own subnet because it's its, it's, its own network in its own right, although it's um, logical. So let's say VLAN 3 is in 192.168.3.0. Let's get the dots there. And we'll leave it at a standard slash 24 mask. Now VLAN 2, let's say it's 192.168.2.0/24. Now bear in mind that the switch doesn't <laughs> doesn't care about OP addressing. It's not bothered. When we need to route between the two different VLANs, then we'll go off to this this guy here. But for the moment. Or, or we want to configure is two different VLANs. Now, if you configured it this way, uh, VLAN 2 would not be able to speak to VLAN 3, but that really doesn't matter. For the point of this lab, all we want to make sure is that the devices on VLAN 2 can communicate between each other and the devices down here um, on this VLAN can communicate as well. Communication between the two um, would require the layer 3 device, which we'll talk about in a while. The other thing, it's well worth you penciling this out as well on a, on a piece of paper because otherwise it's easy to get lost as to where we are. When you're configuring the switch, you need to know which devices are plugged into where. And I know this may sound painfully obvious when I say it, but I've often connect, connected up um, a switch in a, in a rack somewhere, um, walked off or even driven off somewhere and thought, hang on a minute, wh where did I plug uh, which device? And it can be a little bit embarrassing having to come back. So what we'll do is I'll indicate to you which devices are plugged into where so when we're configuring it in a while you can see so PC0 is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 1 on the switch PC1 is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 2 PC3 is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 4 and PC4 is connected to fast ethernet 0 slash 5 so note that down if you want or second time round when you come to look at this video just note down which is where so here is our network PC0, PC1, obviously I'll switch in the middle, PC3 and PC4. The other thing to bear in mind is you need a fairly recent version of iOS on your switch. The reason is there's old fashioned commands known as VLAN database. We don't want to be using the VLAN database command because it's not applicable anymore for the CCNA. So first thing is I'll issue a show version command. So this will basically tell me what my iOS release is on the switch. Well the model first. So we've got 2950T, 24 port. If we scroll up here, we've got version 
EA4 is our iOS on our switch. The other thing we need to know is uh, not for this lab but our MAC address. This is the MAC address for the chassis of the switch. Which we need to be in config mode, config space T, short for config terminal. Now you won't believe how simple is this is really. It's to create a VLAN all we say is VLAN2 in config mode and VLAN2 has been created. It drops the switch drops into config dash VLAN. If you want uh, it's a pretty good idea to give the um, the VLAN a name. So name I think we called it HR for VLAN2. Forgive me I'll just, I'll just want to check so I know I've got it right. Yeah, VLAN2 is HR okay now you could exit here back to config mode and type VLAN 3 or you should as long as you've got a reasonably decent uh, decently new iOS be able to just from there type VLAN 3 and name is finance for VLAN 3 and that's it we've created our VLAN if I exit I could have just typed control and Z but it doesn't matter show VLAN brief and we can see we have two VLANs configured on our switch VLAN number two HR VLAN number three is finance now look at all these ports we have on our switch fast ethernet 0 slash 1 to 24 and then our two gigabit ethernet ports these are all in VLAN 1 which is our default VLAN native VLAN here what we want to do, do you remember we said we want to put our devices our PCs into the correct VLANs so fast ethernet 0 slash 1 I'll be going into VLAN 2 and 0 slash 4 if you look back at our diagram in fact we've got it just here 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 4 will be in VLAN 2 0 slash 2 and 0 slash 5 are in VLAN 3. So 2 and 5 need to go into VLAN 3. Now by default all um, ports on the switch are access ports. They're pretty clever the 2950 and they can actually put themselves into uh, a, trunk, a trunking port if they detect on the other side. So conf t again that's the, the basic command I don't type, tend to type out the full commands in the exam you should be fine typing int instead of interface fast ether that's just not very efficient you wouldn't do it in the real world would you and in the exam the emulator in the exam you should be okay so interface f slash sorry f0 slash 1 and we've dropped into config dash if if in the exam that command doesn't work for any reason you can you obviously know you can type out interface but it should work fine and then say I type the command switch the um, com the, the question mark sorry should work in the exam as well some people say it doesn't but it really should work but at the end of the day the command is only switch port so it's not too hard to remember if you get stuck again you can type the question mark the command we're looking for here is access so I press your power switch port access and what we want to do is drop this into a VLAN Oops. and then you can see the next command available is VLAN and do you remember the VLAN we want for 0 slash 1 it's VLAN 2 and there we go it's not too difficult was it now we don't have to drop out of interface mode we can just type int f 0 slash 4 and switch port access vlan 2 so 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 4 are now in vlan 2 I could do a show vlan brief command but I'd really like to put all our interfaces in, into the correct vlan interface fast 0 slash 2 and remember this is going into VLAN 3 switch port access VLAN 3 and interface 
fast zero slash five switch port access VLAN three. So I'll do control and Z now. Show VLAN brief. And let's just see what we've done. We've got VLAN two, the HR VLAN, it is active, and we've got ports fast Ethernet zero slash one in there. And finance VLAN three active. We've got interface fast Ethernet zero slash two and zero slash five in there. Um so that's fine. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to configure the PCs to have the correct IP addresses. You you obviously should know how to do this. You prob probably won't need to worry about this for the exam. They'll probably say that the device is already uh, configured with IP addresses, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll just pause the video. Okay, so I've configured the IP addresses on our devices. I just want to pick a font that's going to stand out. So we've got 192.168.2.0. On PC0, I've done the address dot one. So 192.168.2.1. And on uh, the other side, it's 192.168.2.2. Down here on PC1, it's 192.168.3.1. And over here, it's 192.168.3.2. So now to do a test, just to make sure this is all working, we should be able to ping uh, 192.168.2.1 to 2.2. Um, we shouldn't be able to ping across our VLAN, but we could ping um, from 192.168.3.2 to 3.1. So I'm going to go ahead and log on to PC4. Now obviously this isn't what you'd see on a, a normal PC, but you could get up a command prompt. So what I'll do is do a ping and it's 192.168.3.1. So I'm pinging from PC4 over to PC1. And you can see I've got a reply there. There's a reply to all my ping packets. Okay, so I'm happy that's worked there. I'm going to go over to PC3. I'm going to check connectivity on there. So this one, in fact, if we um, if I type IP config, we can see this address is 192.168.2.2. So ping 192.168.2.1. And we can see we've got a reply there. So that's all work fine. Alright, so we've got the same network diagram as before, but this time we've added a second switch. So we'll just cover which is where again. PC0, PC1, PC3, PC4, and we've added PC5, which is, say, in another part of the building. It really doesn't matter though. And what I wanted to do is, we're just going to concentrate on VLAN 3 here. Now we've done the configuration already, or partly done it, for this VLAN here. And it was VLAN 3, and it was finance. The other thing I wanted to just remind you of is the port numbers. And I'll keep the same colour. So PC1 is in fast Ethernet 0 slash 2. PC4 is fast Ethernet 0 slash 5. Now we don't need to worry about this. Remember we've already configured this in the last lab. Now connection between the two switches we're going to need to configure as a trunk link. Again they're pretty clever these switches so actually it would already know, but I'm going to put the command in anyway. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 24. So I've used the very last port available on the switch. 
There are gigabit ports, but I don't really want to go into that here. Fast Ethernet 0 slash 24, and then Fast Ethernet 0, sorry, 0 slash 6. And remember the IP address for this uh, VLAN, it has to be in its own network. So we've got 192.168.3, that was dot 2, that was dot 1, and we'll say this is, sorry, that was dot 2, this is dot 1 over here, and we'll say this is dot, I'll say it's dot 5, because it can be any device within that network. Okay, so I just want to just recap again and apologies if this has already sank in. Let's forget about VLAN 2 for now, that's all working fine and there's no devices down here in VLAN 2 so we don't need to worry about VLAN 2 going across the trunk. Here is our trunk link so what we need to configure now are trunk ports going across the two switches. So the trunk ports basically tags, normally tra tags traffic to say which VLAN it is, gets here, takes the tag off and then delivers it to the correct device. So we've got a uh, VLAN 3 spanning across two switches. Uh, all the devices are in the same VLAN. Again, can't emphasize how important this is. It, it won't work otherwise. You'd have to add a router onto this network and you'd have to configure the router to um, deliver traffic between the two VLANs. Again, we're not going to worry about that at this moment in time. All right, so let's go back to our network. Let's go on to the top switch. Now remember, it's 0 slash 24. Conf T. <clears throat> interface fast ethernet 0 slash 24 now if the command was switch port mode access to make an access link now I didn't actually put that in last time I've remembered but because it's uh, in there by default switch port if I do a question mark so you can see all the different options here for this particular one switch port the next command is mode if I type the question mark, we've got three different options here. We've got, we can configure it as an access interface, forget dynamic, we don't need to worry about that, and trunk. So switch port mode, I'll just get back down to here, and it's trunk. Okay, so in fact, can't see host name top switch just so you can see that it's the top switch all right let's go on to the bottom switch now command line you can see fast ethernet 0 slash 6 has already come up enable conf t we have to create the vlan vlan 3 what was it? Finance must match. You must make sure you get the typing of the name wrong. Uh, the wrong, typing of the name correct. Sorry. And we need to drop interface fast zero slash six. Switch port access VLAN three. The next thing is interface fast zero slash twenty four. switch port mode trunk so that sets it to trunk in I press control and Z so when you've configured your trunk you can type the command show interface trunk to see which interfaces are trunk in by default trunks will carry all of the traffic for all of the VLANs you can change that but we don't need to worry about it for this explanation so fast ethernet 0 slash 24 is carrying all the traffic for all of the VLANs. So the only thing left to do is if we go back to our PC, you don't really need to worry about this. But I'm just going to put an IP address on the fast Ethernet interface. I think we said it was going to be 192.168.3. Mm -hmm. 
3.5 tab down it will give it the default subnet mask so in fact we should be able to then get to a command prompt type IP config okay so ping 192.168.3.1 which goes all the way across the trunk link and over to the VLAN and we got a reply there so I just want to show you what we've done here you can see all the replies we've got the trunk link configured between the two switches uh, if you're using packet tracer by the way make sure you drag a crossover cable it's a bit daft because you'd obviously do it with a live kit but between the two devices here we configured uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 24 and 0 slash 24 switch port mode trunk will turn it into a trunking interface for fast ethernet 0 slash 6 we did switch port access vlan 3 and we created vlan 3 on the switch you must remember to create vlan 3 so create vlan and uh, the command to create the vlan is uh, just vlan and then space and then you type the number three you then you can then type the command name and then the name um, to configure the trunk link switch port mode trunk so I like to keep it nice and simple there's other subtle commands that you can configure but we don't need to worry about this for the purposes of this lecture okay make sure that the device down here is in the same subnet as these the other devices in VLAN the VLAN and then you can should be able to ping across okay so if we go back to where we were we've done configuration on one switch and we've done VLANs on multiple switches so we've come to the end of this uh, lecture I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in another lecture no doubt Welcome to the basic switch config video or lab. Uh, I found you can read stuff many, many times over in books and read over labs, but really I think the, the key to success in your Cisco exams and getting confidence is actually play with the Cisco equipment. Now, preferably you want to have access to live Cisco equipment. So you can obviously do this by buying your own equipment off eBay, for example, or some sort of reseller. Um, the other alternative is online racks where you can rent rack time. If you go to racks.howtonetwork.net, there's a live rack on there. If you really can't do that, then there are systems like Packet Tracer, which you know they work pretty well and they're getting a lot better. Not as good as real equipment. It's um, Packet Tracer is a, a router and switch emulator. But for the purposes of CCNA, it's certainly you know good enough to to get you through the exam so for the CCNA you're looking for the 2950 or the 2960 model of switch preferably uh, I've got one up here so normally when you boot up any device you need to go um, type in enable now you can shorten all these commands you could just type EN or you could type EN and then hit tab and it will complete it for you but for speed when you're doing this for real on a live network or as a job then you're normally short on all the commands when you first boot up a device you can type the show ver which is show short for show version version so show ver and this will tell you the operating system and some of the details so one thing to uh, note here is uh, every switch has got a base mac address when you start doing labs for a spanning tree it will be looking for or part of the algorithm will be computing the MAC address for the switch and this has got a base MAC address here you'll see the model number and you'll see some of the information like your power supplies and parts and stuff that you really don't necessarily need to worry about it'll tell you how many uh, depending on the model how many fast inter fast Ethernet interfaces you have and then gigabit Ethernet interfaces as well 
The other thing it will normally tell you is what release of operating system code you have on it. So we've got something called C2960 LAN base M and you can check on Cisco's website for the breakdown of what the codes mean. You'll get more on the uh, Cisco routers such as enterprise image, voice images and, and security images. So then a show version, uh, you can normally if you go to config T, you drop into config mode, switch or router, and then config in brackets. A lot of people change the host name. So you could type SW1, which is short for switch1, or you could call it anything really. Some uh, common show commands if you do a show VLAN, it will show the VLANs that are configured. By default, all interfaces will be in uh, VLAN 1. You can do type show interface and then whichever interface. So fast, uh, I'll have a try fast zero slash one. Give you some information about the interface. So I haven't connected this switch to anything. MAC address for the interface. Uh, this has got half duplex set, which you obviously need to bear in mind. They normally auto detect. So if you connected this to a full duplex device, then it would automatically detect that and run at full duplex. Uh, show VLAN 1, Oops. show interface, VLAN 1, and this will show you um, statistics about VLAN 1. We haven't done any configuration on this switch at the moment, by the way. So there we go. If I just have a quick look at the slides, uh, so say we wanted a IP address to manage the switch, which means you could telnet to the switch across the network. So we're going to config mode again and say um, if I type VLAN 2 it creates VLAN 2. You used to have to do a long, longer winded way of um, configuring v, uh, VLANs but the newer versions of iOS which will be tested on the, in the exam um, you can do these, these commands here. The older command was VLAN database. So VLAN 2 I can attach an IP address to this virtual LAN IP ADD and I'll go 192.168.1.100 If you come out of config VLAN I tried to put an IP address on there but you have to come out interface VLAN 1 Interface VLAN 1, enter IP address 192.168.1.2, for example. So they have configured an IP address attached to VLAN 1. You do need to have a physical interface in VLAN 1 also, and this is how you'd be uh, connected to it over the web or over, the, over your local network. So interface fast zero slash one for example. Now normally if I type switch port mode, most switches are left in or interfaces are left in access by default. So you shouldn't need to fill the rest of the command by type and access unless it's been left as a trunk interface or set to dynamic. Then I can type switch port access and then which VLAN I'd like the interface to be dropped into. If I type the question mark here, I want to drop this interface into VLAN 1. Switch port access. Um, Sorry, switch port access, and then if you type the question mark and hit enter, it'll ask you which VLAN you want to put it in. So switch port access, VLAN 1. So next thing I want to do is 
configure a default gateway which all the traffic for the switch will be sent through this default gateway conf t ip d e or type ip d e f and then if i hit tab it should fill in the rest for me that should work on the exam just bear in mind what the full syntax for the command is just in case you have to type the full syntax 68.1.100 enter there anything else on the slides we need to cover yeah where to send the traffic which we've done i have changed the host name uh talnet traffic something that we could look at as well so on our switch if i type exit if i type uh sorry conf t then line vty space zero space now we'll see how many Talnet lines we've got on this switch. So we've got up to 16, which is 0 to 15 inclusive. Um, we need a security image if we're going to get the... So I'm going to type transport input and see if this is going to let us permit SS, SSH traffic in. Okay, so it's not a security image. If it was a security image on here, I could type SS, SSH and that would say only permit SSH traffic in. So my only option here, well, is all or Talnet. You can have a transport uh, output as well. So you could say perhaps you could let SSH traffic only in, but Talnet traffic out for whatever reason. Transport output and whichever you choose to add. Okay. The only the other thing I want to look at is um, if you want to create another VLAN, uh, VLAN 2, for example, so that creates VLAN. Uh, I'll type interface fast 0 slash 2, see if that's available. Yep. Um, and switch port access VLAN 2. So I'm, I'm attaching fast ethernet 0 slash 2 into VLAN 2. Control and Z. If I type a show VLAN. Show. Show VLAN brief. And we can see we've got fast ethernet 0 slash 2 added to vlan 2 all the others will be in vlan 1 by default the reason i did this is um in the exam they could ask you to have a management interface other than in vlan 1 or the native vlan so what you could do is just create vlan 2 and then add your ip address to vlan 2 which we haven't done yet and then drop an interface a physical interface into vlan 2 Welcome to a simple lab on configuring a switch for voice and uh, data. This is one of the CCNA requirements, so I'm not going to go into the theory. Just a little uh, note though, you need to bear in mind you've got a voice port and a, a data port and you need to drag across your power connection if you're using Packet Tracer, which I presume most of you will be because it's free and it's got your ability to use an IP uh, phone. I'm not going to do any configuration between the PC and the switch. The, uh, that's not covered in the syllabus. So I'll just show you how to configure the access and the voice uh, VLANs because you need to know the commands. I'm going to create a VLAN 10 and give it a name. don't need to give it a name, but I will just for um, completeness and good administration. VLAN 11, I'll name the voice VLAN. This isn't actually configuring it as a voice. This is just giving it the name. In case anyone else wants to configure or check the switch after us switch port mode access for the interface the phone is plugged into switch port access vlan ten press enter and then next comes the important command we need to know switch port voice vlan eleven so we've basically got two VLANs operating on the uh, interface here. 
We'll add that now and just do the um, show interfaces switch port command. Oh, sorry, show CDP neighbor. You need CDP turned on in order for the voice VLAN to work, but it's turned on by default, so you should be fine. Unless someone's turned it off. You can see the phone details there with CDP. And then um, show interface, fast Ethernet, 0 slash 1 switch point, uh, switch port. And you can see the um, static access and also you can see the two VLANs. Alright, so I think that's all you need to know for um, the exam. But make sure you can do the lab without looking at the solutions there. Alright, so that's the end. Thanks for watching.